Uh, I'm going to take off with the recent discussion that Senator Cruz had with you, Mr. Shaben, and also uh, I think it's central to what Senator Cotton asked about. And uh, Senator Cotton asked appropriate questions. He got appropriate answers, uh, and as, as, sh as he should. But when you say that we have the cash market and you report daily, so I'm talking to uh, uh, Miller or, or Shellpepper, when you say you report twice daily these sales, remember you're reporting on about less than 20% of your sales in most cases. And consequently then, what we need is that other 80% to have transparency so that uh, people that are selling on a cash negotiated basis on a daily basis knows that what they're getting. And uh, if we had that, I don't think we'd be here today with this issue. And it's my understanding from the laws that are already on the books that Secretary Vilsack might have the authority to bring about more transparency in these contracts that are out there. Uh, uh, conf uh, uh, confidentiality parts of those contracts. So these packers can't give those prices out. Now, what's the reason for keeping that secret? I don't know. I don't understand at all that that should be secret. But if you had 100% of this daily kill being reported, then those people that negotiate price would know exactly what they're, what they're getting. So uh, uh, I, I just think I ought to point that out. There was nothing inappropriate with any of these questions about what transparency there is, but there isn't enough of it. And that's because of these contracts having these uh, confidential clauses or whatever you want to call it in them. So I'm going to, uh, to go to you, Mr. Shaben. Uh, I know your family farm's been in the livestock business since 1950. Besides livestock auctions, your farm includes cow-calf. Uh, I'm excited to hear that your kids are also involved in the agriculture. How does the lack of cash trade in other regions impact livestock markets today like your livestock market? The, well, the, the lack of cash trade, and, 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 and if we're right in saying that it brings a, mo a more robust, um, and in this instance, uh, a more um, price appropriate uh, response back to the cattle feeders, how it makes a great deal is the people that we serve as senator in our auction markets are the, are the um, are the independent cow calf producers, um, and and so as the price of fed cattle rises, the bids that then go back to the people who produced it from the start get higher. Um, it's uh, it'll be the quickest way to add um, to add value into the uh, into the rural sector. So um, uh, that's uh, that 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 is the big thing that here that we push about. Well, it, it, that that money that that can get created in this system gets trickled down so fast. And, uh, and anybody that's been around agriculture knows that that's a continuous w wheel that literally goes 24 hours a day. And they, and they, and they, and that money gets recirculated back as good as it goes. And, uh, putting it back into rural America is the best we can ask for. How many, Mr. Shaven, how many Packers do you participate with in any given week? Would more competition benefit you and the independent producers? Well, of course, uh, more competition, uh, Senator, is going to uh, benefit all independent producers. It's in, as it was pointed out by Senator Cruz, it's the backbone of a whole society. Um, it's going to benefit it for sure. As far as how we deal with, uh, ironically, the two gentlemen that are represented here today, like I said before, are direct customers of mine. They come to my market every week and participate it, and that for that we're very thankful. Um, but over time, what we've seen through consolidation, specifically in my business, to the coal cow market, to the to to what ends up back in the ground beef chain, sir, um, we have seen such a consolidation in that industry that. 20 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, we would have had between five and eight buyers weekly at our market to purchase the coal cows that go back into the hamburger supply chain. We have two today. We have two. And, and, it's, it, and, and we're so glad we have two. Um, but we're just afraid that what happens if we go to one in consolidation, if we go to one or I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a very scary proposition. I'm going to ask Mr. Miller 
and Mrs. Shell Pepper. Uh, with regard to the Tyson fire and also JBS ransomware attack, the highly concentrated meatpacking industry showed it's extremely vulnerable. Shutting down one plan, even for a few days or weeks or months, backs up production, leads to higher prices for consumers, lower prices for farmers, and meat shortages. Would you agree these disruptions highlight the need for more competition? So, Senator, thank you for the question. Um, one thing I, I want to revert back to a, a statement you had just made and a question you had asked the gentleman prior to me. Um, we do report every purchase. The USDA then takes it from there, whether it's a whether it's a formula purchase or a negotiated trade, and then they move it into the specific report. The same for the sale of product, whether it's sold on a formula basis or negotiated, it goes into those varying reports. So I just wanted to clarify that for you and in the committee. How does that? Uh, have you uh, have you answered my question? Would you agree that these disruptions highlight the need for more competition? So I'd like to speak a little bit on the Holcomb uh, disruption. Uh, if you go back, you know, an unexpected disruption similar to this will shock the system. There's no doubt. However, we took measures to lessen the impact of the fire by shifting cattle out of that region to other production facilities to be able to take advantage of our other five facilities in the United States here and to increase our harvest capacity in those plants. We also temporarily moved team members around from plant from that Kansas region up into our other facilities to increase our chain speed. Mr. Miller, you want to answer that question? Would you agree that that these disruptions highlight the need for more competition? So when we talk about competition, we welcome all the competition there is. There's small players, there's large players, as I said in my opening testimony and in the written testimony, the competition is intense. And in fact, if you look at uh, the, the announcements that have been made in the last 60 to 90 days, there's upwards of eight to 10,000 head of additional harvest capacity that's yes. scheduled to come online over the next several years. So we, we do welcome more competition. Th this will be my last question. Uh, you just said that you report data, but it's, uh, as a f matter of fact, it's not made public. So would you be okay with removing confidentiality blanket uh, in those contracts? I'm sorry, Senator, are you referring to uh, a the, library of contracts? Are you, report, are you talking about reported trades? I, I'm talking about the fact that you say you report daily or maybe yes, twi twice a day, all the data, including what's uh, pre-contracted and uh, any other arrangements you have. But that information is net, not made public. It goes to the USDA. Would you be okay with removing the confidentiality bank blanket that's in these that keeps this information from being made public so i believe that is that is a question for the usda and mas ams division to make a decision on that but i do believe confidentiality plays an important role in this too especially if there's only one party that's negotiating or trading that specific day you have to take confidentiality into, into consideration okay uh, uh, very good 